William Lane Craig disagrees with the theory of relativity. He believes Einstein was wrong essentially because relativity clashes with the premises of the Coulomb cosmological argument. Craig believes in what he calls the A theory of time. According to this theory, only the present is real, and no point in time can have any reality until it is reached. That is, until that point in time has come to pass. The future, then, has no reality because we haven't reached it yet. No future moment in time can be real until time catches up to it. However, according to what is called the B theory of time, all points in time are equally real. In other words, the past may be behind us, but it's still back there, as real now as it was when we experienced it as the present. And the future is ahead of us, but it's also real, despite the fact that we haven't reached it yet. According to Craig, the B theory of time says that things don't come into being and go out of being. Rather, they are just all real. They just exist. Now how does that impact the argument, whatever begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause? Well first and foremost, I think the A theory of time underlies that first premise. When I say that everything that begins to exist has a cause, what I mean is that things can't come into being without a cause. Things don't just pop into existence. They have causes that produce them in existence. And that presupposes this A theory. On the B theory of time, nothing really ever comes into existence. The universe begins to exist on the B theory only in the sense that a yardstick begins to exist at the first inch. It just has an edge. But the yardstick doesn't come into existence at the first inch. The A theory is the most widely held perspective and the most intuitive. However, in light of what we know about relativity, the A theory generates a few problems. This is especially the case when it comes to simultaneity. For those unfamiliar with the relativity of simultaneity, I'll put a link to a 60 symbols video that can explain it far better than I can. According to the theory of relativity, two events that are simultaneous from one frame of reference can be sequential, one after the other, from another frame of reference. So say two events, we'll call them event A and event B, are simultaneous from one frame of reference while being sequential from another frame of reference. If we apply the A theory of time to this phenomenon, we must assert that from the frame of reference in which the events are simultaneous, since they both occupy the present, are both equally real. Event A is real and event B is real. But from the frame of reference in which the two events are sequential, one event occurs in the present, while the other does not. So in this frame of reference, while event A is real, event B is not real. It hasn't occurred yet. So according to the A theory of time, these two frames of reference are inconsistent when it comes to the reality of event B. At the time that event A occurs, in one frame of reference event B is real, while in the other event B is not real. The A theory of time forces us to assume that event B is both real and not real. How the fuck does that make any sense? However, according to the B theory of time, which says that all points in time are equally real, event B is real in both frames of reference, regardless of whether it occupies the present. Now doesn't that make a lot more sense? In fact, the only way the A theory can reconcile these two perspectives is to assume that the difference between the two frames of reference is illusory, which is precisely what Craig does. It is for this reason that Craig rejects the theory of relativity and adopts what's called a Neo-Lorentzian perspective of this phenomenon. The key difference between relativity and neo-Lorentzianism is that relativity says that there is no privileged frame of reference. There's no frame of reference which is the right one. But neo-Lorentzianism says there is a privileged frame of reference. One frame of reference is correct, while others are just an illusion, despite the fact that we can't know which is which. According to Craig, neo-Lorentzianism is correct because there is a frame of reference that is the right one. And what frame of reference is that? God's frame of reference. Of course. Craig says, since I am firmly convinced that a tensed view of time, the A theory, is correct, I think Lorentz was, in fact, right. Interestingly enough, Hendrik Lorentz, the man upon whose ideas Lorentzianism is based, abandoned Lorentzianism in favor of relativity in 1919, when some experiments were done that pretty clearly confirmed that gravity has certain relativistic effects on space. So even Lorentz did not believe that Lorentzianism was correct. Craig, however, simply and baselessly dismisses all experimental evidence for relativity as one big illusion. He thinks there is one correct frame of reference, even though we can't tell the correct frame of reference from the illusory one. This is not only a non-falsifiable assertion, it's also an unparsimonious one, which is why it's not exactly embraced by scientists. You can see relativity at work, and the only reason anyone could dismiss this as an illusion is because of a dogmatic and completely fucking baseless commitment to the A theory of time. So why should we believe
believe in God, according to Craig? Well, one reason is because the Kalam argument demonstrates that there's a God. But the Kalam argument only works if you accept the A theory of time. And why should we accept that when experiments seem to indicate that it's wrong? Well, according to Craig, we should accept it because that's the theory of time compatible with the Kalam cosmological argument. Do you see the circularity here? We should believe there's a God because of Kalam, and we should accept Kalam's apparently incorrect assumptions about time because there's a God.